morning. Uh, in our place, we at Swaraj, we have presentations every time a Koji, students are called Koji. So whenever they go out for two months and come back, they ask to do a presentation. And every time we use the word presentation, they resist. We don't want to do presentation. So we came up with this word. It's called Parvane ki Kahaniya. So something sharing of the fireflies. So I'm telling myself, today I'm not doing a presentation. I'm telling Parvane ki Kahaniya so that my nervousness goes down. And I want it to be more interactive. So uh, beginning part, I'll be sharing a little bit. And then I would like you to ask questions, because I'm the one who has opposed and rebelled against standing in front and bombarding people with ideas. And I'm doing the same today. So I just don't want to do that. Um, so at the middle of the session, once the videos are over, uh, I'll start talking about Swaraj University. And I would like you to ask me specific questions about the program so I can focus the second part of the talk on that. OK, so I'm excited to start sharing about this uh, alternative space called Swaraj University. However, most of you must be wondering, the mainstream schools are doing so good now that why do we need this all hippie kind alternative schools, where the teachers and students dress up as hippies or wannabe Gandhi? So what's the need? So the first part of my talk is going to focus a little bit about why the need of alternative came about, and especially for me, what made me disconnect from the mainstream mass-scale factory schooling. Uh, and then we move on to sharing the stories of Swaraj. So I'm going to start with the story of the unique you. So I believe that each and every one of us is very unique. We all have some innate wiring which makes us so different. Like even you have a twin brother or sister, you and that person will be so, so, so different. Sometimes we say, oh, my best friend is just like me. But she's not like you. She or he is not like you. Sometimes we say, oh, we are both scorpions. We both Capricorns and we are so excited. We are so alike. No, you're not alike. So when you see something which is so specific to you, that what makes that unique you? It is your learning style. It's a family. It's a culture in which you're raised. It is your experience. It is, it, it's made of so many things. And it is your inner wiring, which is, we don't know where it comes from. But it, when you come to that subject which you know or you like, it just gets you connected to that thing. So because I started to think that if we are made, if nature has really, really made us, each and every one of us so different, then do, shouldn't we give some time in the education system to figure out what has nature actually made us for? That's the first point I felt. And also the second thing, if each and every one of us is different, in your classroom, when you're seeing your kids, when you, if as a parent, you're seeing your uh, children, you see that they are so different, the way they learn, speak, uh, everything. So then, if they are different, then shouldn't we give time for that uniqueness to blossom, to maintain that uniqueness, to awaken that uniqueness, rather than putting them in one mold and making them as one size, uh, one size fits all. So what does the unique you is now a product that is shaped to fit in the system. So there's no uniqueness left. We put the kids from one side at the age of two and a half or three. And for 15 years, we start pouring things from Upar, which is subjects to disciplining, to giving rewards and punishment, to giving them labels, to everything, so that they all become just one single product. One single product, where is it going to serve? This product is going to serve go and serve to the corporates or the state. They, they do not, what they are and who they are is not mattering at all. So this was my first point of disconnect. Then comes the unique you fitted into a square. There was a square theory shared uh, by a friend of mine called Yako Hecht. He's from Israel and he has been working with a lot of democratic schools there. So it was very interesting. He brought this concept So what he says, you can see the big green space. So that is the body of, can you see them? <laughs> it's a huge random, uh, random shape. I can't see the word at the bottom. Yeah, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the word at the bottom. So it's a huge random shape. Now this huge random shape is the body of knowledge that human beings have so far figured out. The knowledge which we haven't figured out is unlimited. This is, imagine this is the shape, uh, this shape is a total amount of knowledge. And the small little square you see inside that, 
is the total amount of knowledge that has been given schools and colleges everywhere in the world. So imagine the knowledge is so much, but the amount we can give in part is just this much in relation, in proportion. Now the height is, the we are training everybody to be in the square all their life, 15, 17, 18 years. So the time which is spent inside the square is a time well spent. The time which is spent just a little bit outside is complete time waste. And we condition them, so every activity we do with the students is all related to the square. So my question here is, is that knowledge, which is limited knowledge, which is also I call it the dead knowledge, is it getting us ready to deal with the real life and real world? Does it have the capacity to meet the needs of the real life? And also, while, they are, while the students are getting trained inside, are they becoming critical thinkers or are we making them passive consumers and pushers of information? That is what they are doing. For 15 years, we are taking some information, we are vomiting it out in an exam paper. So this is all we keep doing for 15 years. And then we say, okay, we are getting them ready for society. I don't understand how. So this was my second point of disconnect, that anything I did outside of the school was not regarded inside the school. Anything I did in vacation had no value. Even though my learning was most in that time, who cares? Because there are no marks, it's not measurable. So anyhow, so this is the square theory which I really like. Uh, and the third point which got me disconnected is the obsession, the unique you and the obsession of getting a degree. I have a special degree which is called FIAS. Does any, can anyone crack that? It's called fail in all subjects. <laughs> so I failed in all my subjects in my 12th and I'm proud to say that. That's the day I started to live life. And I was so happy, I was con my parents congratulated me when I failed because they said, now you're gonna start begin living life. And that was true because my dependency on everything stopped. So what is happening is we are giving all this knowledge, obsessing kids with getting a degree, we are constantly giving rewards and punishment. So if they are to do anything, if they are writing something, unless and until there is a reward given to it, they are not going to do it. So we are making a society just uh, wired up to getting rewards. And this whole fragmentation of knowledge has happened in getting PhDs or specialization, where a person who has got PhD doesn't know what to do anything in the house or in, with his car or even how to find a map to read somewhere. And you will meet these people, I am not joking, I have met several people who are like that. So first is, we are just, the more Real learning has stopped. It is just related to if I'm getting marks, if I'm getting certificate, if I'm getting degree, only then I'm learning. If I'm getting appreciation, if I'm getting praise, only then I'm learning. Otherwise, I don't want to learn. So that is the society we are creating. The fragmentation of knowledge I said already. And the sec third important thing is we are fragmenting the whole society. There's a class worse than Brahmin and Kshatriya and Shudra. So what we are doing is a class. People from IITs and IIMs and Harvards, we put, keep putting these labels and we say, okay, we are, they are the elite and people like me who are failures, we are the lower, lowest class. We cannot mingle. The elite and the lowest cannot, there's no right to mingle. And also we are so traumatized or we are so controlled and become slave of the square infested thinking that even when we get out of the square system, we even hate the square system and we have gone like 10 years out, away from the education. Still, we constantly, when we meet someone, we ask, okay, what's your degree? We introduce ourselves with degree. Not that I'm passionate about this, I'm doing this, but, oh, I'm MBBS or I'm MBA from so-and-so, so-and-so college. How does it tell you about who you are? It doesn't tell anything about who you are. But we are so obsessed and controlled by this thinking. So I'm going to tell you a quick story with uh, the obsession with degree. There was once uh, a guy, a scientist with uh, several PhDs. He was just new, fresh out of school, college. And he was so excited to get his first job. The, uh, his employer sent him to a small village in Gujarat on the bank of River Narmada and he had to find one specific plant to bring back because it had the medicine to solve um, some uh, diseases. So he off, off he goes. He gets a train and a bus and he lands on that small little uh, village and then he realizes that where the plant is available is actually a fort, it's across the river and he has to go by the boat. So it was already dusk and he was wondering now what do I do? There's no hotel to check in, nothing. 
So he manages somehow some village smart kids, street smart kids, got him onto a boat, called a boatsman and put him on the boat. And then off he goes. Now he was sitting on the boat and thinking, his double PhD guy. So he's wondering, oh, this guy, the boatsman, what would he know? But anyhow, I have 40 minutes to kill. I'll chat a little bit. So he asked this guy, uh, Bauji, have you heard about microclimate here? Or such a special microclimate? I'm sorry, I'm speaking in Hindi. People who don't understand, please ask your neighbors. Because it doesn't make sense to say this in uh, English. So he says, it is such a big microclimate that the people who get to the world in the world are here. There is a relationship of symbiotic relationship and there are so many varieties of symbiotic relationship of the people who get to the world. So this boatman is looking, the old guy is looking at this young chap who looks educated. He says, brother, forgive me, I don't know what you are talking about. I am a liar, I am a liar. I don't know so much, this is about the most important climate. जाने तो तुम्हारी one third जीवन बर्बाद हो गया। So that guy was feeling bad, the boatsman, and he says ठीक है आगे गए थोड़े। फिर थोड़ी देर के बाद बोला कि ठीक है this man man may not know about the climate, but he is stepping sitting on the soil on the banks every day. He may definitely know of the soil. So he is telling, बाबू जी आपको यहाँ की मिट्टी के बारे में तो पक्का पता ही होगा। इसकी मिट्टी में ऐसे पौधे होते कि अजीब roots deeper भी जाते, spread भी होते, nitrogen, phosphorus सब इकट्ठा करते नॉडियल्स उसे बड़े-बड़े हो जाते हैं सो अगेन दिस बोट्समैन इज गेटिंग परफ्लेक्स इसे बाय साहब माफ करना मैं तो गवार हूँ मुझे कुछ नहीं पता है मैं तो स्कूल में पढ़ा लिखा नहीं हूँ ये भी नहीं पता है आप हर रोज तो वहाँ बैठते हो तो नहीं सिन आपका दूसरा वन थर्ड और टू थर्ड ऑफ आने लगी और पत्ते धूल सब उड़ने लगा। So this old man is shouting and saying, hollering, भाई साहब, आपको तैरना तो आता है ना? तो that guy is saying, नहीं, आपको तो पूरा जीवन बर्बाद हो गया। So, so that is it. So with our all our PhDs, we don't know if we don't know who we are and we don't know how to get ourselves up and going. That is what we land with. So anyhow, so I go to two small clips. So which shows about my title, which says death of a learner and a birth of a directionless society. So these two clips tell, speaks aloud what I went.
अब ये अपना हीरो है इसने भी मैनेजमेंट लगन इंजीनियरिंग ऑफिस सिस्टम हाँ बोलो नीचे देखो खुश हो जाओ रोने लगो एक दिन यहां से बहुत कोस दूर दिल और दुनिया के बीच अपने हीरो को एक साथी मिला साथी ने कहा हाय हीरो ने कहा हेलो साथी ने कहा क्या हाल चाल सब ठीक हीरो ने कहा फाइन थैंक यू हाउ आर यू साथी ने कहा यार तुम ऐसे क्यों बात करते हो कैसे ऐसे मशीन वाली आवाज में क्या मतलब मतलब ये कि जो अरे रुको जा कर रहे हो मैं रुक नहीं सकता रुकूंगा तो मर जाऊंगा मर जाऊ मैं रेस में भाग रहा हूं ओके तो कौन सी रेस है मैं नहीं जानता तुम नहीं जानते कौन सी रेस है तो भाग क्यों रहे क्योंकि सब भाग रहे हैं इसलिए मैं भी भाग रहा हूं अच्छा छोड़ो जाने दो क्या फर्क पड़ता है कौन सी रेस है जब तक जीत रहे हैं फर्स्ट तो आती हो ना रेस में नो सेकेंड नो थर्ड नो अबे फोर फिफ्थ सिक्स सेवन एट यानी कि बीच में कहीं आती हो इस रेस में बीच वाले हो तो हां मैं मीडियो कर हूं आम आदमी रेगुलर ऑर्डिनरी <laughs> बड़ा प्राउड फील कर रहे हो यार वीडियो कर बन के है अगर मैं एक बात कहू दिल से मुझे नहीं लगता कि तुम ऑर्डनरी हो अरे तुम्हारे साथ होती हो तो मैं स्पेशल हो जाती हूं यार तो सोचो तुम क्या हो गया मैंने ना लाइफ में तुम जैसा नहीं देखा तुम्हें खुद नहीं लगता कि तुम कुछ हो मतलब स्पेशल हो सॉरी रॉन्ग नंबर ऐसा कैसा हो सकता है कभी किसी ने नहीं कहा तुम्हें यह सुनकर हीरो को कुछ याद आता है और वो कहता है हा एक था जो कहता था कि मैं स्पेशल हूं कहता था ना कोई कौन था वो अरे एक सांप था वो सांप हाँ वही करत रहा ऐसी उल्टी सुल्टी बात तुम फलान हो चलान हो हीरे की खदान हो हरे भी साला पता है ऊकर नाम का रहा का ऊकर नाम रहा बचपन मेरा बचपन भन्न उठाए टसने को तैयार हम तो बड़े होते ही मार डाले उसको कुचल दिया जमीन पे ऐसे पांव रखे उसकी गर्दन पे और तबाह दिए साले को मर गया बचपन अब ठीक है अब कोई नहीं कहता कि मैं स्पेशल हूं अब मैं आराम से अपनी जिंदगी जी सकता हूं वॉक स्टॉप स्माइल प्लेस ऑर्डिनरी मीडियो का अरे क्या बकवास है यार तुम गलती कर रहे हो तुम खुद चूज करो ना अपनी रेस फिर देख लेना फर्स्ट नहीं आए तो आसानी से फर्स्ट आओगे गारंटी है सो गारंटी है रुको आसानी से फर्स्ट आओगे सो इट्स ईच वन इज स्पेशल एंड सो अगेन आई सम अप द फर्स्ट पार्ट व्हिच इज द डेथ ऑफ अ लर्नर एंड बर्थ ऑफ अ डायरेक्शनल सोसाइटी आई थिंक आई मेड अ पॉइंट हियर सो हियर व्हेन वी आर रेजिंग इंडिविजुअल्स हु आर कंफ्यूज्ड एंड कॉन्फ्लिक्टेड बिकॉज़ दे आर नॉट डूइंग व्हाट दे आर इनर सेल्फ इज टेलिंग we are raising individuals who have we are not training them to ask fundamental questions or do critical thinking we are raising individual who are not accepting the gifts we are raising individual and not giving them space to ask and know who they are really uh, we are cutting them from nature natural play and even now in human interactions we are replacing that with computers and technology and saying that is advancement or development we are separating learning from living when we are doing all this and we are putting them in a race constantly forcing them to run not knowing where they are going then where is the society going i feel it's going without any direction so anyhow so with all this and my disconnect with the mainstream and anger with the mainstream i started i became part of finding what are the other alternatives so my journey began 15 17 year actually it began when i started to feel 
but actively began in 2000 when I started to look for all these alternatives in learning and what can be done because it one cannot live like this and this is not the only way one can learn there may be handful of people who like the mainstream education but there will be several who like different way of learning so Swaraj University started with this idea of we don't want to do what the mainstream is doing because that's not serving a the individual not serving the society so uh, the experiment of Swaraj University got started in 2010 uh, the, there are two, three main things which we focus on. One is self-design learning. The second is uh, localization. It's an opposite of globalization. So in my intro, you would have heard that we focus on how local economies, economies, ecology and cultures can be maintained. So how can we do our, what we want to do, what we are passionate to do, keeping in mind where we come from, how do we maintain how do we not destroy in the name of development? How can we conscious development be done? That is at the core of the program. But self, unless the self is not healed, unless we don't give time for the self to know oneself, where do we come from? Give them ample time. There's no hurry. Life is too long. And I, we don't believe that in two years you have to produce something or five years you have to produce something or get a job. If when you're passionate of something, about something, Work will automatically come, money will automatically come, there's no end to it. I've never ever used degree or a certificate to get anywhere inside a school, college or anything. I don't care about that. And I believe even our Kojis, our students are called Kojis. Kojis means seekers, explorers. So our Kojis are also out in the world, almost 100 of them now. And they are doing wonderful things, failing, getting up, everything, but they have not most of them are not using any degrees. They're doing things based on their experience, their portfolio. Uh, so it's a degree-less program. We don't ask anybody, as I'm the failure who started the program, anybody who has failed, walked out, kicked out, done whatever they want, are welcome to join the program. Uh, so at the center of the program, there is knowledge of the self. Um, and it, the program is the, each individual designs his or own curriculum. So if there are 20 together, every year we take 20, and all 20 of them will have a different curriculum. So they have time six months in a year when they have, the, it's called the SDL time, self-design learning time, or the Eclavia time we call. So in that time, they go out in the world and spend time with mentors who have actually done work. They may not have any degrees, but they are actually doing the work and they learn from them. And it's not that the, those people are sitting and taking classes. You are just hanging around them, looking at their work, looking at their vision, how do they interact, what do they do, what are their thoughts around everything in life. So it's about like Guru Sishya, they learn in the way of just observing their mentors. Then the world is the classroom. So it's not restricted to a school or books or walls or anything. They come on campus, but they stay with us for a limited time and then again go out and figure out. Inspire. Even when they are with us, there's a lot of, uh, there are a lot of times we do learning journeys, activities which goes, uh, we go out in the villages, we go out in nature. Nature is a big part of our learning. Uh, also, whenever we talk of self-design or Swaraj, people get stuck with Swar, that self. But Swaraj is an interconnected self with the others. It cannot be operating on just I and me, I, me, myself, which I feel the mainstream education is focusing too much on I, me, myself. So it's a community of learners together. Uh, they collaborate, they co-create, they give feedback. So each individual has several people who support them in the learning process, which starts with their peers, their family, mentors, facilitators, uh, something we call the feedback council where each one is requested to have three people in the feedback council of different age who look at their life and the learning in this two years while they are with us and give them feedback about where they're going, help them connect with the right people. So that is another support network they have. And some the last people in the support network is they're called the Mitra, someone who can understand and connect with them emotionally. And so they could be adult who will be a friend, philosopher, guide kind of person. So each Koji will have this five or six people in their learning as their support, uh, supporting people. They engage with the whole body if they find out what kind of learners they are. And if they are a certain kind of learners, they encourage that and continue with that. There's no force or oh, you must be this or you must encourage that. Um, there's a lot of focus on living. I think the mainstream education is just focused on livelihood. 
here the focus is on living understanding life understanding what what what's the purpose of life why am i here and then start gradually putting pieces together and start living because i think each individual is responsible we think every parent also thinks oh my child is very irresponsible but i don't believe that so each individual is responsible and they start figuring out their responsibility once they start living on their own uh, we have a big time celebrating failures so we encourage them in special year 2 to go ahead and try experiments and fail fail completely make big losses or whatever they want to do and uh, we sit and celebrate we sit and analyze we sit and find out what where did we go wrong and whatever they are learning is relevant to real life it's not disconnected so these are the i think my time is also up but uh, i'm going to uh, open it up for question and i'm going to show you few pictures so we we'll, uh, we have a campus outskirts of udaipur and the bottom picture you see it's a raft made by ro bottles old bottles and we have a lake nearby so we uh, for several days several, we some of us made this and we were going across and giving rides to the whole community uh the top picture is a bamboo hut we have done lot of eco construction and sometimes uh, our kojis take part in it and sometimes very active part and there some of them have turned out to be eco architects food is a big thing we do lots and lots of experiments with food slow cooking people would have like some people who are into it in a years time they would gather 60 recipes and really master it uh nature as i said is a big big part so there's a lot of time people spend solo in nature or sometimes in group sometimes living outside uh, in tents for 4 5 6 days without anything very simple living uh the space for experiment they are building several things and uh, solar cooker and various things are being constructed a uh, lot of things lot of experiments are done by for them to go and start earning also it's not that we are making a cook, uh, protected environment where they don't know how to earn or cannot survive in the society so we have a very big beautiful lake called fateh sagar and lot of their experiments are done on fateh sagar so both are these experiments with drum circle and food selling food at fateh sagar early morning um so there is there are various sessions on perspective building what we call about what where is the whole world heading towards so what is this development is this a real development so there are various so the bottom part is a session which i was done on there was a play done on kudumkulam uh the nuclear power plant and there was a mine performer who had come and so he taught us various things but we heard the whole story of what happens to people who are in that area and the problems with that the top is a sex education class which was going on similar to what uh, the first, first speaker said uh here is an experiment of uh, five people who just finished uh, time, uh, for 20 days staying in nature uh, very simply they just they, it's called the eklavya time the eklavya time expands from 2 3 days goes all the way to 25 days and you plan your time what do you want to do and what outcomes you want if at all you want any outcomes uh so this five kids they decided to live simply and figure out what it really means to live simply so they had no fridge no they cooked their own food they invited two people from the community every day for meals and every evening they had circles uh wondering about life and questions about relationship and earning and various things and at the end of 20 25 days when they harvested the learning it was just marvelous they are changed human beings in the 20 25 days a uh, lot of our beauty products are made at home so we have gober packs uh, and gober soap uh, with multani mitti uh, and as we say there's a lot of community support in that so somebody is experimenting with uh, beauty products they the community ex- allows them to experiment with their skin and bodies and there's a lot of us deal with our old fears and time spent to deal with that so this is the story and i think my time is up i'm just going to it's a very small experiment with we do it every year only with 20 kids because it's a life changing a process and we do it very slowly where we say people who join can never leave for us so the program is just for 20 people but it continues forever they keep coming back whenever they need help so i'm ending with a quote if you think you are too small to make an impact then you haven't been in a bed with a mosquito <laughs> <laughs>